Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn about subtopic number 2 of thermochemistry called calorimeter. Let's recall on our previous lessons where we learned about change of heat in the reactions known as enthalpy, delta H. Now, we are going to learn how can this heat be measured. One technique we can use to measure the amount of heat involved in a chemical or physical process which is calorimetry. Calorimetry is used to measure amounts of heat transferred to or from a substance. To do so, heat is exchanged with a calibrated object known as calorimeter. Calorimeter is a device used to measure the heat release or absorbed by a physical or chemical process. Different substances absorb heat at different rates due to various structural factors. The measurement of heat change will depend on heat capacity or specific heat capacity. Heat capacity is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of that substance by 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin, where we use symbol of capital C. So the unit will be Joule per degree Celsius or Joule per Kelvin depending on the information given in the questions. There's another variation used to calculate this more specifically known as specific heat capacity denoted by small letter C which is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of substance by 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin. Then, the final unit will be Joule per gram per degree Celsius or Joule per gram per Kelvin. Heat, denoted by small letter Q, is defined as thermal energy transferred between two systems at different temperatures that come in contact. The equations that describe heat flowing between a system and its surrounding is Q reactions equal to Q surrounding plus Q system. The heat exchange in a calorimeter should not be lost to the surrounding. Therefore, we're going to have a relationship of Q surrounding plus Q system equal to zero. The measurement of heat transfer using this approach requires the definitions of a system and its surroundings. We usually define the system as a substance that undergo the chemical or physical change, while surrounding is the other components of the measurement apparatus that serve to either provide heat to the system or absorb heat from the system. The thermal energy change accompanying a chemical reactions is responsible for the change in temperature that takes place in a calorimeter. It is not always the system that releases heat and the calorimeter that absorbs heat. It can happen either way. Since we know heat exchange involves heat released and heat absorbed, therefore we can simplify the equations as negative Q release equal to positive Q absorbed. Heat, temperature and heat capacity are all related by these two equations, Q equal to C delta T or Q equal to MC delta T, where Q is the heat released by substance, M is the mass of substance, Small c is the specific heat capacity, capital C as the heat capacity, and lastly, delta T is the temperature change. Let's try example 1 to illustrate the concept of calorimeter we have learned so far. We are given a 50 gram mass of a metal is heated to 100 degrees C and plunged into 100 gram of water at 24 degrees C. So given to you temperature of the water, the initial temperature. And then the temperature of the resulting mixture is now 28 degrees C. So this is going to be the T final, this is going to be the T initial. So you need to find the how many joules of energy did the water absorb. Focus only on the water first. So we have this gram of water. Delta T can be found here. And then we have the specific heat capacity of 4.18. So now you can first find the delta T by subtracting 24 from 28 to get 4 degrees C as a delta T and then simply substitute into the formula of Q equal to MC delta T and lastly we'll get positive 1672 joule this positive indicates heat is absorbed for the next questions how many joules of energy did the metal lose so we can rely on these Equations, the negative Q release by metal usually the same as Q absorbed by the water. So we can simply say here 
the Q release by the metal gonna be negative. This negative belongs to the Q release, the heat release, still in Joule. Question C, it asks for specific heat capacity of the metal. So we need to include all the information about the metal, the mass, and also the delta T, the temperature. So now this specific heat capacity denoted by symbol of small c. So we can rearrange this formula since we have already got the Q, we have the M and also we have the delta T, then we can simply find the C. So our C going to be this negative 1672 joule divided by 50 gram times with this negative 72, we can get it from 100 and also 28 degrees C. We get the difference between them. And then we have this negative because they're going to release heat. So negative and negative, lastly, we'll get C with positive value because this C just the number. We don't take the sign. So we have 0.46 joule per gram per degree C. So this is the unit for specific heat capacity. Now, we're going to relate the theory we've been discussing with the applications of a calorimeter. As shown on the slide, a simple calorimeter, also known as coffee cup and constant pressure calorimeter, is essentially a polystyrene cup with a lid. The cup is partially filled with a known volume of solutions and a thermometer is inserted through the lid of the cup so that its bulk is below the solution surface. When a chemical reaction occurs in this calorimeter, the heat of the reactions is absorbed by the solutions. The change in temperature is used to calculate the amount of heat that has been absorbed or evolved in the reactions. It is important to first consider the setup of each calorimeter to illustrate the core idea before attempting calorimetry problems. Since simple calorimeter consists of solutions and calorimeter, then heat of reactions must combine these two factors. For solutions, we're going to use MC delta T as it has specific volume of solutions to be added, while calorimeter will have the C delta T. Mass of solutions is determined by simply adding the volume of two solutions and convert it to grams assuming density of water of 1 gram per mil. As this calorimeter is used to measure heat release in non-combustion reactions such as heat of neutralizations and heat of solution, Therefore, we're going to further calculate for its enthalpy of reactions by using these equations. Delta H is equal to Q reactions over number of moles. Number of mole can be determined by determining the number of mole of the limiting reactants between the two reactants involved in the reactions. Simply use MV over thousands to calculate number of mole for these solutions. A quantity of 100 ml of 0.5 molar HCl is mixed with 100 ml of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide in coffee cup calorimeter. So when you're dealing with coffee cup calorimeter, usually you're going to have neutralization reactions. As we can see here, we have both acid and base to react to form salt and water. That has a heat capacity, the capital C, of 335 joule per degree C. The initial temperature of the HCl and sodium hydroxide solutions is the same, the 22.50. And then the final temperature of the mixed solution is going to be 24.90 degrees C. So from these two number, we can find the delta T. Calculate the heat of neutralization reactions in kilojoule per mole. So we're going to use a bit of same steps as in example 2 with some modifications because we're dealing with both solutions. Now, we need to start with the heat release. This is neutralization reactions. They're going to release heat. So our Q reactions, we're going to put this negative at the front. Then we have Q solutions. Now comes from both HCl and sodium hydroxide and also the heat capacity of the calorimeter. So this mass of solutions belongs to total of these two solutions. So we now have 100 ml and 100 ml. Usually, they will give you information about the density. So density, usually 1. So we can assume that this 100 ml belongs to 100 gram as well. So 100 and 100, you will have 200 gram of the solutions. And then we're going to use these 4.18 belongs to specific heat capacity. Usually, they will mention in the questions. 
and then this 2.40 comes from the difference between 24.90 and 22.50 and then we have this heat capacity of current meter 335 times with the same delta t lastly our heat release is going to be negative 2810 joule the heat release must belong to only a certain number of moles, so we need to relate it to the neutralization reactions taking place. We have HCl to react with NaOH to form NaCl and water. If we balance the equations, we're going to get coefficients of 1 for each of the species. And then between these two, since we are given the molarity and also the volume, then we can determine which of these two are going to be the limiting reactant. So. We're going to find both number of moles for HCl and also sodium hydroxide. Both will, will give exactly the same number of moles, which is 0 0.05 mole. Since they both got the same number of mole, we could say neither is in excess. So we can simply take this number of mole to proceed with our calculations. So the heat release just now, we got for forming this one mole of H2O. So this 0 0.05 mole of H2O is formed when negative 2810 joule being released. What if for one mole of H2O, so we simply do the cross multiplications, then we'll get negative 56200 joule. So since we need to change it to kilojoule per mole, divide it by 1000 and then put per mole after this kilojoule. And this indicates the enthalpy of neutralizations. Don't forget to include the sign to indicate that they are being released or being absorbed. A simple calorimeter is great for measuring heat flow in the solutions, but it can't be used for reactions that involve gases since they will escape from the cup. The simple calorimeter can't be used for high temperature reactions either because they will melt the cup. A bomb calorimeter is used to measure heat flows for gases and high temperature reactions. A bomb calorimeter works in the same manner as a simple container, with only one big difference where the reactions take place in a sealed metal container. Heat flow from the reactions crosses the walls of the sealed container to the water. The temperature difference of the water is measured just as it was for the simple calorimeter. As for calculations, both heat released by the calorimeter and absorbed by the water will be measured by using the equations that is similar to the one we use in simple calorimeter. But since our solutions now is water, so simply change the Q solutions with Q water. This calorimeter is used to measure heat release in combustion reactions. Therefore, the same formula as in previous calorimeter will apply, but this time around, the number of moles is determined from the mass of combusted substances. We can use mass over molar mass to find the number of moles. A quantity of 1.435 gram of naphthalene, the C10H8, a pungent smelling substance used in moth repellents, was burned in the bomb calorimeter. So you're given a big hint in here, the bomb carometer. So from the bomb carometer, we get to know what kind of formula are we going to use. Consequently, the temperature of water rose from 20.17 degrees C to 25.84 degrees C. So this is going to be the delta D. If the mass of water surrounding the calorimeter was exactly 2000 grams, so this is the mass of water, and the heat capacity of the bomb carometer was 1.80 kJ per degree C. Calculate the heat of combustion of naphthalene in kJ per mole. So basically, from the bomb carometer formula, we're going to get only the heat release or heat absorbed. So obviously, in this case, because we have combustions, means we're going to get heat release. So they're going to be only in joule. And then we're going to proceed with kJ per mole by relating it to the one mole of the naphthalene. Okay, so we'll start with the Q reactions now, consists of water and carometer as part of the bomb carometer setup. And then we're gonna substitute the value. So for water, we have the mass of water, which is 2000 gram. This C water is the specific heat capacity of water. 4.18 will be given in the table of constants. And the delta T comes from the 25.84 minus 20.17 degree C. Well, for this big, the capital letter C, 
belongs to heat capacity of 1.80 and the delta T will be the same as in the water. So we'll substitute the value and lastly we're going to get negative 5.76 10 to the power of 4 joule. So this is not the end of the questions because we want to find them in kilojoule per mole. So the heat radius we calculated just now belongs to only a certain number of moles. So how are we going to find the number of moles? By finding the number of moles dividing this mass of the naphthalene divided by the molar mass of the naphthalene C10H8 giving you 128. So we'll get 0.01121 mole of C10H8. So we know this 0.01121 mole of naphthalene releases this amount of energy, negative 5.76 10 to the power of 4 joule. Now we want to find for 1 mole of naphthalene, how many heat will be released. So we're going to do the cross multiplications and lastly, we'll get negative 5.1 for 10 to the power of 6 joule. So this is for every 1 mole. And then, since we want to change it to kilojoule per mole, simply divide it by 1000, we'll get negative 5.1 for 10 to the power of 3 kilojoule and then we put the per mole after this kilojoule. So this indicates the enthalpy of combustions. That's all for subtopic 2.2 calorimeter. You may now attempt your non-face-to-face -face and face-to-face -face tutorial from week 3 hour 1 until week 3 hour 3. Thank you.